Rob, what is our fourth main topic today? Should we play some sad music? I think so. Think of some rainy, sad piano. Think Incredible Hulk, the TV show, oh, as as uh, as he's wa- as Banner is walking away. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, That's this, in your head. This comes to us from Jesse Price. Hey, John and crew. <laughs> I don't know if you saw. Don't do this ASMR. Henry Cavill posted on his Instagram saying he had spoken to James Gunn and Peter Safran, and they told him he was no longer going to be playing Superman in the in the in the DC universe. What are your thoughts? Bring on the filthy. Thanks. It is crazy how many messages I got yesterday via text, email, social media whatever, saying, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> How many people wrote to me, like thinking, like checking in, with, like welfare checks, checking wow. with me saying, Johnny, you all right? Are you doing okay? <laughs> like when the news came out and I was sitting down, it's funny because I was sitting down in the movie theater yesterday with Ann to watch Violent Night. By the way, had a lot, finally saw Violent Night, had a lot of fun with it. And the che- last check of the phone before the movie starts and I turned off, it's like, oh my God. And then I had to put my phone away. I was a little distracted watching Violent Night. All right. Henry Cavill. It's been a roller coaster lately, man. It's been a roller coaster the last couple of years. But my favorite, favorite Superman of all time, Henry Cavill, is no longer going to be Superman. It is now official. It is done. Uh, I'm going to read you on my screen here, Jonathan. I'm going to read off what Henry wrote on his Instagram. He said the following. I've just had a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran, and it's sad news, everyone. I will, after all, not be returning as Superman. After being told by the studio to announce my return back in October, now remember, this is before James Gunn and Peter Safran took over. After being told by the studio back in October prior to their to their hire, this news isn't the easiest, but that's life. The changing of the guard is something that happens. I respect that. James and Peter have a universe to build and I wish them uh, and all involved with the new universe the best of luck and the happiest of fortunes. For those who have been by my side through the years, I feel like he's talking to me, Rob. For those who have been by my side through the years, we can mourn for a bit, but then we must remember, Superman is still around. Everything he stands for still exists, and the examples he sets for us are still there. My turn to wear the cape has passed, but what Superman stands for will never. Uh, or never will. It's been a fun ride with you all, onwards and upwards. Did we expect anything less but but pure class no. from Henry Cavill making that announcement? He was direct. He goes, my time as Superman is over, but Superman endures. And hey, guys, these these new guys, they have a universe they got to build. And Superman still persists and exists. Now, on top of all that, it gets kind of interesting because this comes to us from the folks over at The Hollywood Reporter because James Gunn adds a little bit more color to this. Uh, Cavill's post came just as Gunn tweeted that he will be writing the new Superman film set to focus on the seminal DC superhero's younger years. This is where it gets key. Cavill could be in the mix to play a different DC character down the road. James Gunn wrote, Peter and I have a DC slate ready to go, which we couldn't be more over the moon about. Read that again. Peter and I have a DC slate ready to go. Okay, oh, that yeah. dude. Yeah, ready come to on go. Now. It's there, that, that's why big announcements are coming. Big surprises big are coming. Surprise. Oh. DC slate ready to go, which we couldn't be more over the moon about. We'll be able to share some more exciting information about our first project at the beginning of the new year, which is exactly what you said. Thank yeah. you for that, for correcting me on that. Gunn wrote, the filmmaker added that he and Safran, quote unquote, had a great meeting with Henry and were big fans. And we talked about a number of exciting possibilities to work together in the future. Now, before we get into Henry specifically, I want to point out one of the things that I love about this story and the last story is that James Gunn and Peter Safran did not send Ben Affleck a text to say, hey, man. You know, we're in charge now, and we'd love to work with you sometime. No. James Gunn and Peter Safran set a time, set a meeting, set aside time, and went and met with Ben Affleck. What I love about this is that James Gunn and Peter Safran aren't the types of guys that said, send my assistant over to let 
Cavill know that we're moving on from him as Superman. They didn't send him a text message. They didn't send him an email or a memo. They said, no, this is Superman. We're going to go and sit down and meet with him face to face because he deserves no less. And they set aside the time and they went and they sat down and met. I love that about the way James and Peter are saying, this is how we're going to run this studio. We're going to do it properly. We're going to meet face to face. We're going to look people in the eye. We're going to tell them what we want, what we hope to do, what we'd love to do, what we can't do. And we're going to do that face to face. I love that. I love working with yep. people like that. <clears throat> so I love that. It's also very exciting to see James Gunn say, oh, not only do we meet with him to let him know officially that we plan for a brand new DC universe, that means we've got to move on. But we have ideas for you to still be in the DC universe. After all, it looks like the standard operating assumption now amongst most fans is that Jason Samoa, Samoa, Jason Momoa from <laughs> Samoa, Samoa. <laughs> Jason Momoa from Samoa is... It may very well be Lobo. I mean, there was that cryptic message that Moa put out a little while ago saying, I just got news that I am so excited about. It's the most exciting news of my life. I can't wait to share it with you. And we're still kind of waiting on that. But a lot of people are speculating that he might be Lobo. Whether that's true or not, we'll find out apparently very early in the new year. But I love the idea that they went to Henry and said, okay, you're awesome though. And we would love to still work with you. And we, we think there's still a place in DC, but since we are starting over, we got to rebuild. All right. As anybody other than Mama Cavill, as the world's biggest Henry Cavill is Superman fan, I don't mind giving myself that title. Fight me. As the world's biggest Henry Cavill as Superman fan, I am saddened by this, but I'm okay with it. You know, Rob, one of the, the, the sermons that we preach on the show all the time is that the story comes first. The universe, as you often say, that your your movie universe comes first. Well, the characters and the stories have to come first. They build the universe. Right. Well, but but the characters have to serve, you know, the yes. stories, the, you know. And, you know, we, we've been using the analogy for a long time that, look, DC, we all agree, whether you're a huge DC fan or a moderate DC fan, we all agree that the DC cinematic universe, as it has been, has never lived up to its potential. We never. all agree on that, right? I, like, I don't think anybody disagrees with that. We all agree on that statement. This is a universe that has never lived up to its potential. It's funny because you and I have been defenders, staunch defenders of Man of Steel. Oh, and, forever. And, and and people have always said that they're poo-pooing it. Now everyone's like, I'm not going to watch any new DC movies yeah, without Henry like, Cavill. You've like, you been shouting what? down that you think Man of Steel sucks forever. But but anyway, that being said, for this you, this cinematic franchise... To live up to its potential, the analogy I've used this whole time, and it's not a perfect analogy, but it, it applies. It's, you can't fix it up. No. At this point, this is not a cinematic universe. It's a teardown, man. It's a teardown. It is a complete rebuild. It, we, have, we are past the point that you can just slap on some crazy glue, put on a Band-Aid, change a little thing, just tune it up, and it'll suddenly miraculously be on par success-wise with Marvel. It's not going to happen, guys. And as the world's biggest Henry Cavill is Superman fan, a complete rebuild means a great rebuild. If you've got a house falling apart, but man, you know that guest bedroom, that guest bathroom on the second floor? Mwah, that's a perfect guest bathroom. It's in great shape. Let's not rebuild the house. Let's just fix it. No, no, no. The house has got to come down. And when you got to rebuild, sometimes that means there are some pieces to your puzzle that are good pieces. But if you're going to rebuild, you got to rebuild. And if DC is ever going to truly get to its potential, it's not going to be from a tune-up. It's going to be from a rebuild, period. In sports, Rob, we've seen this a lot. Your Seattle Seahawks have been through this. In sports, a lot of times fans go when teams have to enter into a rebuilding year or a couple of years, and all of a sudden they trade away a bunch of their great players for draft picks or whatever, and fans go, no, what are you doing? You're trading away. These, these guys are great players. True, but that's because if it's a good team, management realizes if we want to get back to the Stanley Cup or to the World Series or to the Super Bowl or to the NBA championships, whatever it is, if we want to get back there, we can't do it with the way the team is. And then a couple of years later, the good teams that do go through those phases – 
They're playing for championships and, and, and advanced playoff spots again. And so I know everybody was expecting me today to go on this big, long, angry, sad rant about the fact that my boy, the greatest Superman of all time, Henry Cavill, is no longer going to be Superman. And I do lament that. But to be consistent, if you're going to rebuild this universe and have it be up to its potential, you got to start fresh. You got to have a clean slate. You got to take off all the old restraints and all the old handcuffs and all the other things that you had, and you got to be able to push it aside and start fresh. Maybe there's a few details you can carry over. Maybe there are, but for the most part, you got to go. And listen, I will always look back. I, I wrote on Henry Cavill's Instagram last night. I said, listen, I understand that the changing of the guard means a new Superman is needed. I understand that, but it just makes me appreciate him even more. It makes me appreciate Man of Steel every, even more. So I get it. It is what it is. But if DC's ever going to live up to its potential, it's got to be done. We want to thank a sponsor of this video, Masterclass. Masterclass offers classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class instructors at the very top of their fields. Each class is broken out into individual video lessons, usually around 10 minutes long. And Masterclass is completely accessible on your phone, the web, smart TV, and available via audio mode to listen to classes on the go. They have over 2,500 video lessons from over 180 of today's most brilliant minds. They're all available anytime, anywhere on iOS, Android, desktop, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. Now, obviously around here on the John Campus Show, we love our movies. So why not learn filmmaking from Jodie Foster or maybe directing from Ron Howard himself or the great Neil Gaiman doing his masterclass on the art of storytelling. And you guys have heard me talk about my favorite masterclass, Business Strategy and Leadership by Big Papa Iger himself, Bob Iger, the new and returning CEO of Disney. Guys, I highly recommend that you check it out. This holiday, give the perfect gift of an annual masterclass membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash campia today. That's masterclass.com slash campia. Terms apply. Rob, you heard about this news. You instantly got on social media, start talking about it. What's your thoughts today? I well, look, I think you're exactly right. I mean, the problem is this, that like these films never live up to their potential. Even Man of Steel, we always talk about a movie needs to gross three times what it cost to break even. Man of Steel- Generally speaking. Generally, but Man of Steel was a $225 million movie that only made $670 million or something. I liked the movie a lot, but it didn't live up to its potential and it didn't live up to what the studio hoped it would live up to, which is another big problem. The studio never got the return that they wanted on any of these DC EU movies, with the exception of Aquaman and Joker, which earned a lot of money. We're getting another Aquaman movie, and the studio will be happy with that. What they're going to do is they're going to have a unified field theory moving forward where they've, look, it would not surprise me if they define, okay, we're gonna approach the DC universe as a universe. There is the cosmic area where you've got everything from the Green Lantern core to whatever other Thanagar where Hawkman is from. You've got the new gods. You've got Apocalypse and New Genesis. They're like, we got the universe, the DC universe. We have Earth. We have all of these places. It would not surprise me if they're going to have parallel development amongst all these groups mm, and put right. them on a collision course. Because why not? Wouldn't that be cool? Because you've got basically Star Wars and Game of Thrones out in space combined, if you want to do that. I mean, we, we saw Dark Side in the Zack Snyder's Justice League, but wouldn't it be cool if they did a New Gods movie? They've been talking about doing a New Gods movie. I don't think that Ava DuVernay is going to come back and do that. But you've got all of this stuff out there, and they're going to develop it all concurrently. Because James Gunn was doing the same thing over at Marvel with his cosmic characters yeah. before he got derailed. So why wouldn't they? And they're not just going to, they're going to have big plans and they're going to be big and bold. And what they're going to do is they're going to curate this, man. You're going to get the best creators. They're all going to be on the same page. They're going to know what they're doing. And James Gunn and Peter Safran, unlike even Kevin Feige, they're filmmakers. 
I mean, Kevin Feige only produced Marvel movies. James Gunn has made other kinds of films. So yes, has Peter Safran. Yeah. So they know how to work with talent and they know how to make films. They're actually, for the very first time, you have two filmmakers running the asylum. And they're going to pick the very best crazy people to come work with them <laughs> because they're going to have a team of people that they like, they know, and respect. And they're going to go after them and they're going to have carte blanche to do it. The thing is, they're being given a lot of rope. I don't think any filmmakers or any studio executives in the history of Hollywood have been given the keys to the kingdom the way they have here. And there's a lot. I mean, it sounds fun, but the pressure that these two guys are unbelievable. It's unbelievable, unbelievable because they're being given. And it's like, OK, guys, you have a four year contract. That's what you got. You got four years. You might want to have a 10-year plan. That's great. But you got four years, which means how many movies in that four years are you going to get done? And what's the return? David Zaslav is going to be like, bring me the money. Show me the money. You know, I was thinking about that whole stuff about return. I think the first real sign, look, I to me, you know, I think Man of Steel, I think Zack Snyder's Man of Steel is the most underrated comic book film ever made. I, I love this film. I love it more and more every time I watch it. But a surprising amount of people did not feel the same way I did about it, in the, uh, I, which I'll never understand, but that's fine. All film is subjective. To me, though, the real warning sign that something wasn't right with the way that the DCU was presenting itself to the audience was Batman versus Superman, a movie I like very, very much. I, I like Batman versus Superman, uh, both versions. I like that movie very much. But the reality is this, and I said this before, I said this when the movie came out, I said long before the movie came out, I said this. You do a movie called Batman versus Superman. Now go back, take yourself back in time a little bit before that movie ever came out or whatever. You do a movie called Batman versus Superman. That movie in its sleep should have challenged for being a $2 billion film. Oh yeah. Not necessarily cross the two billion mark dollar mark but in its fucking sleep a movie called batman versus superman that is a movie that should be challenging challenging the two billion dollar mark in its sleep it's pencil sketch animation should have challenged for a two billion dollar mark this is a movie that, that did not hit the billion dollar mark you know i i recently rewatched it because i've been watching my 4k discs that, I really like the film. That movie, I like it, but you know what? It is a major bummer. That movie begins with the destruction of Metropolis, Bruce Wayne's own business. One of the, the best openings to a comic it, it, movie it, ever. It's great. Ever. But the whole movie, it begins with the destruction of Metropolis, a bunch of people that work for Bruce Wayne dying, Bruce Wayne staring at the sky at Superman, pissed off and angry, and it ends with a dead Superman. And Doomsday. You, that whole movie is dark oppressive batman's torturing criminals there's nothing in that movie if you're a parent and you take your eight-year-old kid to see a superman batman movie and that's the movie you watch the reason it didn't make two billion dollars is because it's a major bummer when you watch that movie you are not elated but i think and i, think, I like it yeah I, I i i really like this film but here's the thing what it showed us was remember we talked a little bit earlier about the pressure on James Gunn for the first DC movie because we've seen films come out of the gate and not connect with the audience. What the results of Batman versus Superman showed us, despite the fact that I thought it was a really good movie, and again, I think one of the greatest openings to a comic book movie, it ranks right up there with the Nightcrawler attack on the White House for X-Men 2 as one of the greatest openings to a comic book movie ever. But it showed us, that movie underperforming the way it did, showed us that on a fundamental level, out of the gate... They did not connect with the audience. There was, right. and we we can we can do volumes about maybe why they didn't connect, what parts failed to connect with them, whatever. But we saw very quickly that they did a Batman versus Superman movie that did not make even one billion dollars when it should have challenged for two. And I think ever since that is when a lot of people, including me, started saying maybe they should reboot because they weren't able to connect with the audience. And we've gone several more years hence. They've had a couple of big wins. The Wonder Woman movie was a big win. Aquaman was clearly a big win. Um, but it's just time. They've got to reestablish themselves with the audience again. And you know what else? An another, I mean, this is Monday morning quarterbacking, but I, I find that movie fascinating to watch. We, the audience, love Batman and Superman. They hated each other in that movie. 
There's no like it's like we love these characters and and they until hate. they brought up Martha. Well, yeah, but the, I, then they, but the, you you watch them and there uh, uh, there's no that movie as much as I enjoy the tone of it and it's cool and all that, it is not fun. There's not a moment where you're like this is not fun. I feel bad watching this movie. And when it was over, it's like Superman's dead, you know, and 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 everybody's sad and and Zod's dead, half of Metropolis, how many tens of thousands of people died? And you you you're coming out of that movie going, well, it was cool, but I feel like I need to take a shower. I think the whole point though is it the, the whole reason I bring up the the thing about Batman versus Superman whatever is just showing again that Putting on some spackle and a Band-Aid isn't what's going to bring no. DC to its full potential. It's it's time to go back to a page one, clean slate start. And unfortunately, that does mean Henry's got to get replaced as Superman because you need a new Superman to start a new world. Otherwise, you're just bringing the same baggage over. And uh, I, I, it sucks, but it is what it is. I think if James Gunn makes his Superman movie, you are going to be smiling at least 10 times because of things that happened in that movie. There's going to be moments throughout the film from the beginning, the middle, and the end, and you're going to be left with that triumphant flying into orbit with the sun coming, and 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 you're going to have a huge smile on your face. I, I believe it. I believe it. At least I hope so, because who, whoever is going to be the new Superman, best of luck, dude, because you got huh. some shoes to fill, buddy. You've got some shoes to fill, so I I don't envy the sucker who's going to step in and play Superman because you got Henry Cavill size shoes to fill. And uh, Henry, you're my Superman. Um, thank you. I mean, I, I, look, as let me fanboy out for a second. Just let me be a driveling fanboy for a second. Uh, Henry, you made me believe a man could fly. Going back to the Christopher Reeve uh, movie s slogan, you made me believe a man could fly. The moment he puts his fist down on the ground and the and the stones start to raise and you see first flight, Henry Cavill made me feel the awe and wonder of a superhero movie again, where maybe I'd started to become a little desensitized. Maybe all of us have to a degree. Henry Cavill's portrayal of Superman made me feel the awe and wonder of what a superhero movie could be again. The, the way that he was somebody who struggled with what it meant to do right while also struggling to find out who he was, which I think... It was, in a way, a superhero film, a superhero character that all of us could relate to, despite the fact that he was an alien god in many ways. But our struggle of how do I do what is right and how do I really find out who I am, it's just something that Henry Cavill brought to life in such expressive, fantastic ways. He really owned this character. So, Henry, for myself and a lot of other fans, maybe not all of them, that's fine, but for myself and a lot of other fans, Thank you for giving us the Superman that you did. Thank you for penciling this chapter of the story of the Man of Steel. And uh, it's always going to be a great chapter for that we look back on. And again, to whoever comes in and fills has to be the new Superman, good luck. We'll be cheering for you. All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think about this? Maybe you're you're happy, Henry. Cavill. Not everybody liked Henry Cavill as Superman. I hear it all the time. That's fine. Maybe you're heartbroken like me, but maybe you're heartbroken, but get it, you're, and you're hopeful for the future. I'll tell you what, as sad as I am today, I am more hopeful for the future of DC today than I have been in a long time. How do you guys feel about it? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there.